Let's look at an example of a vertical circle. Like this, <laughs> we're gonna have tension here. So what? I thought you told me to give tension to detail. Attention to detail. <laughs> All right, so if we look at this, we've got a mass M and it's tied to a string and moves in a vertical circle. So this is, you know, we've got gravity acting downwards here on this thing. And it's important that the you know, radius is R, okay, that's fine, and it's got a constant speed V. So it's just spinning around at a constant linear speed. And the first part, part A, is find the tension, that's why I put this near the tension, at the highest point and at the lowest point. So I'm gonna call this one, maybe I'll call this lowest point, I'll call it like a one, and maybe I'll put the uh, highest point, I'll call that two. So first things first in dealing with this, well, I'm going to just uh, account for gravity. So in other words, I've got downwards right here, I've got Fg. But remember, that equals mg. In other words, the force of gravity, uh, because F equals ma, then I can say mass times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, at least, mg. Now the thing is, this one also has the exact same one here. So this is also Fg equals mg. That's important. And we've also got something else now because there's a tension going on in this string. There's a tension in the string. Now, the tension in the string is always going to be center seeking. In other words, in this one right here, the tension will be, you know, some value here. I don't know how long it is, but T1, I'll say. that That's the tension at point one. And this one right here, though, the tension then will be some sort of T2. And so then, in order to find out, like, what is the tension at the lowest point, well, let's just think about this. Let's use Newton's second law. So that says that F net, you know, that's, that's the net force, is going to be equal to, let's see, tension 1 minus mg. So I can say T1 minus mg. But remember, if we've got this F net, what is this net force? It's actually a centripetal force. And remember how that goes. It's just the centripetal acceleration, so V squared over R, but we throw an M in front of it. So in other words, that can actually become this right here. So that means, in the end, that instead of F net, I've got MV squared over R. So for MV squared over R, that equals this T1 minus MG. Now let's get T1 by itself. So I'm going to say that means the tension then is going to be, I just move the mg over. So it's going to be mv squared over r plus mg. Could I take out the m's in front of it? Sure, but I'm feeling kind of lazy, so I'm just going to leave it like this. So I'll say, okay, so that's at the lowest point, then it's going to be this. Okay, let's do it then, the same idea for the highest point this time. So same idea right here, so we're going to say the f net. Okay, what's it going to be this time? Well, this time the tension, T2 here, is the same direction as Fg. In other words, they're going to be adding then. Since it's this direction and this direction, they're both going down, we're going to add them. So we'll say it's T2 plus mg. And same idea here, F net becomes mv squared over r, just like we had before. And I'm going to say that equals T2 plus mg. And that means if I want to get T2 by itself, then what do I do? I have to move that plus mg. I have to shove it over to the left side. So that means it becomes a minus. So it's going to be mv squared over r minus mg. Now, we've done it sort of in general. Of course, you could figure it out with specific numbers, but I actually don't really care about that. Um, I just want you to look at this, these two right here, and you can at least qualitatively say which one's going to be the bigger one. And that's because if you just look at it carefully, just look at the equation. If you look at the equation, um, this one here is some number plus something, this is some number minus something, and this will be the same number. What does that mean? That means this one here is the larger tension. And it should make sense. If you've ever been like on a roller coaster or something like that, as you're coming down this one right here, you know, you're feeling a lot of force here. Also, like, uh, for example, when I used to fly airplanes, uh, you know, if you're ever doing a loop, for example, um, at the top of the loop, things actually feel pretty light, pretty okay. It's actually on the way down that you really, really feel this force. So it's on the way down right here where you can see the tension's going to be bigger. So that's sort of what you, you know, if, for example, if you're in an airplane, you'd feel more force down here for sure than up here. Okay, let's do part B.
So in part B, we want to calculate what's the minimum speed so that the string never goes slack. And what do we mean by that? We mean, you know, at the top right here, for example, uh, that's going to be when the string can go slack. Because at the bottom, it's always going to be pretty tight here. But at the top, we're just going just the minimum speed. So we actually just care about this T2 one. That was the one at the top here. That's the one we care about. We actually don't care about T1. Not in this part B, at least. Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, at the time right here where it never goes slack, that means we want, for example, the t2 to be, you know, greater than zero. That's what happens when it goes slack. So that means then that the minimum speed must be then, you know, find where t2 equals zero. Okay, so let's use our equation then. I'm just going to set this equal to zero then. So zero equals mv squared over r minus mg. And of course, then what can I do? Because this left side is zero, I can take this minus mg and put it over to the left. So now I have mg equals mv squared over r. Good news, stuff cancels out. The m's at least cancel out. And what am I looking for again? I'm looking for v. So let's just try to isolate for that. So that means then I have v squared. I just want to get v squared by itself. Well, that means my r has to come up top. So it's going to be r times g. Well, that means then that v is going to be equal to the plus and minus, but we're just going to care about the positive one. It's just going to be the square root. So there we go. We've actually solved this question. v equals square root of rg. So depending on what the radius is, that tells you what the minimum speed is in order to do a loop here. In other words, in order for this string to not go slack. right? Because if it's anything less than this, then the string is going to go slack. And if he's even slower, slower, it won't even make it all the way up. It'll sort of just fall. And of course, if you're going faster and faster than this number, of course, then you're, you're fine. This string is not going to be slack.